Hello everyone, welcome to another session for the ARD question series. For today, I have chosen a very important topic, which is on NAFIS, which is also known as the Nabard All India Financial Inclusion Survey. Okay, so this was done on the year 2016, 2017. My name is Hansa Nora Sangma and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture honors and I've done my master's in nematology in agriculture. So please don't forget to subscribe and please press the bell icon. And if you've liked the video, please don't forget to share it with your friends and press the like button as well. So first and foremost, we need to understand what a financial inclusion is, okay? So financial inclusion is nothing but a process of ensuring access to appropriate financial products and services which are needed by mostly the vulnerable and the uh, weaker sections uh, having the lower income than the general group of people in the country, okay? So uh, it is done at an affordable cost in a fair and a more transparent manner by the mainstream institutional players, all right? So finan this financial inclusion is very important in a country like India because it's more of a developing country and it's not uh, a welfare country like other Scandinavian countries or the US. These are more developed and they don't need such a financial inclusion in their country. And since in our country, we have a more of the rural background and we have a high uh, amount of people from the rural areas as well. So it's more important to make them aware and uh, give them all these products and services which can uh, help in the economy as which will be beneficial for the, the rural people as well, right? There's like two aspects of financial inclusion. So on one side, we have a demand uh, and the other side we have a supply so for the demand we have like financial literacy which involves the awareness uh, of these rural uh, people and the farmers or with the weaker vulnerable groups uh, whether they're more aware of all these banks the loans and all these uh, uh, financial institutions as well but in the supply even if they are well aware of all these loans and banks and all these credits such as like Kisan credit card and etc. Even if they know, even if they're well aware of it, if the supply is not there, then how can they get the services and the products as well? So for that to happen, we should have a normal existence of the uh, proper financial institutions or the markets. So this market will include the banks. The banks should be well developed, okay? And there should be an easy access of these services and products to the farmers. And it should be easily accessible to the farmers as well as the farmers should be able to understand. So the schemes, whatever schemes that the governments are launching, all these schemes should be uh, very easy to understand for the rural people, for the illiterate people. So basically it aims at uh, include everybody in the society by giving them financial uh, services without looking at a person's income or saving, all right? So these are the main aims. And financial inclusion chiefly focuses on providing reliable financial solutions with economically underprivileged sections of the society without having any unfair treatment, all right? And it intends to provide financial solutions without any signs of inequality and it also commits to being transparent while offering financial assistance without any hidden transaction or the cost. So for in, for in an agricultural per, uh, aspect, this NABAT has brought up the survey called the NAFI survey, which is also known as the NABART All India Rural uh, Financial Inclusion Survey, okay? And it was released by Niti Ayok on August 16, 2018, right? And NAFIS, it was launched as a national level survey and it offers a comprehensive overview of the status of livelihoods and level of financial inclusion of the population. This will also, all the status of uh, livelihood will also income the source of income, the household savings, uh, the consumption, the expenditure, and all the household assets as well, right? And the coverage of NAFIS spans across various financial inclusion aspects, ranging from the loans, uh, from savings, investment, pension, remittance, and insurance as well, right? And the survey, it also assess the financial knowledge, the financial knowledge of the people, the attitude, the behavior of an individual, and it was decided to carry out for three years, okay? So the duration of the survey was for three years. And it covered this 29 states, 245 districts, 
40,327 uh, households and uh, it was it covered like tier 3 to tier 6 center which was given by the RBI. And this survey was conducted to bring together the financial inclusion and rural livelihood aspects. And this was the first edition of the survey for agriculture households, right? And the data, it was collected through paperless methods. It was done by the computerized aided personal interview. Going back, going to the first question, which of the following statement is or are not true? Nafis was released by Niti Ayog on August, uh, August 16, 2018. This is definitely correct. NAFIS combines information collected from Situation Assessment Survey, SAS, and All India Debt Investment Survey of NSSO, which are collected from two different sets of respondents in a single survey. This is also correct. The coverage of NAFIS spans across various financial inclusion aspects, which also ranges, as we already explained, uh, from loans, from savings, investments, it covered pension, remittance, insurance, to financial knowledge as well, uh, behavior as well as attitude. So all these three points are correct. So the right answer for this would be uh, all of the above. So before going to that, another question, I would like to tell you all that it's very important to know all these facts uh, and the history of uh, the logic behind why this financial inclu uh, inclusion had started. I mean, at least have a basic, uh, get your basics uh, clear so that uh, even if more of the reasoning question comes and you'll be able to answer, it, it will make this of the studying these facts way more interesting rather than just mugging it up. Right. So let's go to this. Uh, the second question, according to the NAFIS survey 2016-2017, how much percentage is shared by the agriculture household out of the total household surveyed? When the survey was going on, we could have differentiated between a rural as well as urban, okay? All right, so, and after that, we uh, divided into the agriculture households as well as the non-agriculture household, right? So it's very important to know the difference between these two. So because these, on this basis, most of the uh, surveys will be conducted, okay? So first one is agriculture household. What is an agriculture household? It is defined as a household that received some value of produce more than 5,000 from an agriculture activities. For example, it may be from the field crops, from horticulture, from fodders or fisheries, uh, apiculture, piggery, be a vermiculture, etc. All of these. And they should be at least have uh, one member who should be self-employed in agriculture, either in principal status or in subsidiary status for the period of one year. Okay. And for the non-agriculture household, it, it just includes all the other household excluding households, uh, which excludes all these activities done in the agriculture household, right? So these are the main basic uh, difference. So questions might come uh, on based on the budget or based on the year as well, okay? Let's go to the question. According to the NAFIS survey 2016-2017, how much percentage is shared by the agriculture household out of the total household surveyed? Okay, so the right answer for this is number D, which is, uh, which is 48%, all right? And out of this 48%, they the 87 percent they belong to the small and small and marginal farmers okay in this slide i've given some of the additional data as well so let us just go through statewide comparisons suggest that meghalaya and mizoram had the highest proportion of agriculture households okay so meghalaya made about 78 percent and mizoram they made it about 77 percent right but on the other hand uh, the southern states such as Goa, and Tamil Nadu, and Kerala, they had the least uh, activities with the agriculture households, okay? So Goa had only about 3%. So in overall, 11.4 household members reported they were uh, to, tr to be trained in a principal activity that they were engaged in. And among the agriculture households, 8.5. And in non-agriculture households, 14.4 members, they reported to have been trained, right? So going to the third question, as per the NAFIS report 2016-2017, how much percent of total rural households have savings in financial institutions? Okay, so the correct answer for this would be, let's just read the options, A, 37, B, 59, C, 
60, D 49, E 71. The correct answer for this is D, which is 49. All right. So let us just go in detail about this question. Okay. So this question, it comes under the financial literacy. All right. So uh, financial literacy is basically a knowledge or an awareness by the uh, farmers or the rural uh, people about the uh, products and services given by the governments or the financial institutions and that way they can have these uh, they can access for these loans or the credits uh, or maybe they can get a credit counseling as well okay so the first thing the report says that only 9.5 9.4 individual from rural areas and over 13.2 from semi-urban areas reported to have exposed to any session on financial education or training all right so remember these facts and out of these, 40 responded, respondents they did well when the questions were asked, okay? And assessment according to the location revealed that 48% respondents from rural areas and 52 from semi-urban areas were assessed to have good sound financial knowledge, right? And when assessed for financial attitude, 42% individuals from rural areas and 48 percent from semi-urban areas were found having positive attitude earning a score of three or more on a scale of five right and this will come under the behavior of the individual so around 49 percent of total urban households they report savings and financial institutions and 50 out of these out of this 49 percent 53 percent of agriculture households have saved in a financial institution all right out of so 49 percent from the rural households and out of these 49 we have 53 percent of agriculture households who have a saving in their financial institutions and only 20 percent rural households they reported being associated with the self-help groups okay question number four what is the size of the average land possessed by the agriculture households as per nabart all india rural financial inclusion survey 2016-2017 okay so uh, options are a one hectare b 1.1 hectare c 1.3 hectare d 1.5 hectare number e 1.7 hectare so the correct answer for this is um 1.1 hectare so the option from the option number b is the correct answer okay so there are usually two states which is kerala and tamil nadu they recorded the same average size of 1.1 hectare and there are about 14 states the topmost being the Nag being nagaland rajasthan haryana punjab okay they had more than 1.1 hectare and the lowest was found in bihar west bengal and orissa okay and taking all the states combined okay 12 percent of the agriculture households are reported to have leased in some land while only two percent leased out land so last the last question nabart all in the financial inclusion survey north face 2016 to 2017 calculated average monthly income of all the rural households in the different states so which of the following options correctly show the state with the maximum and minimum average monthly income respectively as per office okay the options are the maximum being haryana minimum uttar pradesh b maximum haryana minimum madhya pradesh c maximum punjab minimum uttar pradesh d maximum punjab minimum bihar e maximum kerala minimum bihar so the correct answer for this is number c which makes it about maximum being punjab and minimum in uttar pradesh so it basically says that punjab had the highest um, average monthly income okay and uttar pradesh had the lowest monthly income so to make it more clear in this slide we'll just discuss roughly about all the income okay mm office okay they showed an average uh, agriculture household income was mere only about rupees 8931 per month in the year of 2016 to 2017 
and in the past four years there's always there's only had been only there only had been an increase of 2505 per month that's in the last four years and punjab haryana kerala they are the top three states with an average income of about 23000 18000 and 16000 for rural households okay and uttar pradesh has an average monthly income of only 6000 per month right and while cultivation is still a major source of income which is about 35% which followed by the daily wage laborers which makes about 34% livestock rearing contributes only 8% of their income so the majority is coming from the cultivation in the rural households then comes the daily wage then comes the livestock rearing right so in this way it'll be very important for you all to cover all the aspects and all the uh, topics uh, such as the uh, in the the households whether it's rural households or an urban and under that whether it's an agricultural households or a non-agricultural household and the state-wise importance of all these uh, which one has the highest which one has the lowest household as well and the average income the source of income the investment their expenditure their savings whether they have an insurance their indebtedness uh, whether which state has the highest loan or the credit and um, the pension as well okay their behavior towards uh, all the distress events such as crop failure and all of these it's very important to uh, at least have a rough idea and at least make um, point twice uh, notes so that you'll be it'll be much more easier for you all to understand okay so this is a very important um, section uh, it's more of a factual questions but if you apply more of your logic and reasoning then it'll be much more easier for you to remember and that's all for today thank you so much and please subscribe and press the bell icon and if you've liked the video don't forget to hit the like button as well as share the video with your friends whoever's giving the exam